Hi, my name is Lydia Peterson. I'm a first two student and I have been working in Eddie Brostek's lab with PhD student Amel Kongi. I will be presenting my research on which fungal friend is best to trees at nutrient highs and lows. Most trees form symbiotic relationships with fungi. In these relationships, the fungi help the plants absorb nutrients and the plants give the fungi some of their sugar. In our research, we looked at a buscular mycorrhiza, also known as AM, and ectomycorrhiza, also known as ECM, and the extent that they helped poplar trees absorb nutrients. AM is more common than ECM and lives with, in soils with low phosphorus levels. ECM is less common and lives in soil with low nitrogen levels. Most plants don't associate with both of these types of mycorrhiza. However, poplar trees do, which is why we chose to use Poplus granentata or big tooth aspen. This type of tree is very common in the Northeast where we live. Our hypothesis is that AM will be more beneficial in low phosphorus soils and ECM will be more beneficial in low nitrogen soils. To test this, we grew poplar seedlings in the greenhouse and inoculated some of them with AM or ECM and some were controls with no mycorrhiza. We also varied their nutrient levels. Some plants had high levels of nitrogen and phosphorus, some plants had low no levels of nitrogen and phosphorus, and some had either low nitrogen and high phosphorus or high nitrogen and low phosphorus. The plant heights were measured weekly and after 12 weeks, we harvested the seedlings. We separated the above and below ground biomass, cleaned and weighed them while they were wet and after they were dried. On the bottom left chart, uh, you can see the mean final height for the plants. And on the x-axis, you can see that on the left side of the chart is the high nutrient levels and on the right side of the chart is the low nutrient levels. Uh, the yellow is AM, the blue is the control with no mycorrhiza, and the orange is the ECM. AM plants were not negatively impacted as much by nutrient changes. Control plants and ECM plants changed more with varying, varying nutrient conditions. The AM plants had the greatest average height at the end of the experiment in low nutrient levels, but the control plants were the tallest in high nutrient levels. The graph in the top right is mean root to shoot dry biomass of the plants with the, with the type of fungi that they were inoculated with at the x-axis of the chart. Um, you can see that the data in this is pretty varied because the, um, the root to shoot dry biomass is calculated and not measured. You can also see that there's a large difference between the nutrient solutions with low phosphorus compared to the ones with high phosphorus. These results confirm part of our hypothesis um, with the AM plants, but not for the part with the ECM plants. This could be because the ECM plants were rejected by the poplar trees and did not colonize the roots, but it could also be because uh, at some point in the experiment, the ECM had died. We also saw that uh, the non-mycorrhizal plants that were treated with high nutrient solution could grow at a faster rate because they didn't have to share their sugar with the mycorrhiza. Next, we'll be looking at the colonization of mycorrhiza on the roots, and this will help us um, determine if some of the outliers were the reason for some of the outliers, um, if 
some of the nutrient levels had an abundance of colonization and others didn't have any colonization. Um, so it will help confirm our results by verifying that the nutrients, one nutrient solution didn't colonize significantly more than another. I would like to thank West Virginia University and the US Department of Energy for funding our research. Thank you.